chair of the Department of Chemistry at the University of Minnesota. And I'm here today to give some advice about uh, how to give a talk. Um, I've phrased my uh, title of my talk, Which is Better, the Book or the Movie, Advice for Scientists, because I think the attributes that make a something a good book and a good movie are also applicable to how to give a good talk. Um, this discussion is going to be divided into three uh, sub-movies. The first one that I'm going to talk about first here is what's called building the story. Second, I'll talk about how to make the slides. And third, I'll talk about how to actually deal with giving the talk in front of other people. Uh, this talk is based on a lot of resources, um, which I think are really useful. And here's a slide that summarizes all of those resources, and I urge you to check them out. So the question that I'd like to start with is a, is a fundamental one, and that is, why do we like Harry Potter? Harry Potter is both a great book and a great movie. And I started thinking about what made Harry Potter such a great example of both a book and a movie, and how that might relate to how one could give a good talk or write a good paper. Um, and I think there's some fundamental reasons why. The first one is that Harry Potter talks about really big, important issues, life and death, good and evil, the future of humanity. And that's, of course, extremely engaging. The second reason is, reason is, is that the story itself is really engaging. There's an incredibly intricate and interesting plot, really cool characters which are unusual and different from the norm, and really fascinating relationships amongst those characters. Uh, the context is also really important in making Harry Potter a great book and a great movie. Um, we have the Muggle versus the Magic Worlds, and that context, that dichotomy between these two different worlds, makes the story really engaging and really interesting. But fundamentally, I think, why it is that we like both of these so much is because of the way that the story itself is told. It's very visual and imaginative. It's a very clear and engaging exposition, so the writing and the dialogue is really easy to get to, to, to understand and to follow along with. And the pacing is just right. There's this really good variation between action and more philosophical discussions and ruminations, and that, that uh, back and forth between these two different ways of telling a story is really engaging to the audience. Not everything is really well explained either. There's a sense of mystery throughout, so you're always trying to figure things out. But you, you get just enough so that you aren't turned off, and that's a really important part of it as well. And finally, there's this, throughout this book, this real respect for the intelligence of the audience. Not everything is spelled out perfectly. You have to use your brain to understand what's going on. And I would argue that all of these things that make Harry Potter such a great book and such a great movie are equally important in a different context, of course, uh, to telling a good story in a talk, in a lecture, or, say, in a research paper. So, for example, for a scientific paper or talk, it's really important to talk about really big, important issues. Human health, energy, the environment, the future of mankind. It's really important to relate whatever you're talking about in your talk about the science to these big, important issues. It's also really important to have an engaging story. And this is something I think students often forget about because, well, they're very uh, wed to their data. They're very emotionally attached to their data. Students love their data. You love your data for a good reason. You've spent so much time and energy um, uh, talking about it and, and engaged in getting it and working at it that you forget about the fact that what makes a talk really good is that it has a really good storyline to it. There has to be design and discovery and serendipity. There has to be an arc to the talk uh, uh, that you're talking about science, just like there is in a, in a good novel or a good movie. And finally, it's really important to have proper context. So the history and perspective of the field of what you're going to discuss in your science is a really important part of whatever you build into your talk. But most important, I think, for a scientific paper or talk, it's how the story is told that really makes a difference on getting your audience to walk away from your talk having really learned something. And so what I'd like to talk to you about today is how to give a talk and avoid what you see on this slide when you're giving a talk. So the goal is to avoid this. And so the question is, how do you do this? And I think the first thing to talk about is, is to step back and sort of look at the whole process of giving a lecture and ask the question, what's at stake here? 
And I think it's really important to have a, a really good attitude that you portray when you're trying to give a talk. And I think students often are so wrapped up in the details that they, they sometimes forget this. Um, and I think one way of putting this is to don't fear the risk of giving a talk. It's obviously very risky to give a talk, to stand in front of other people and tell a story. Um, what you need to do is turn yourself away from worrying about the risk, about the bad things that might happen when you're giving a talk, and embrace what's really rewarding about giving a talk, which is this incredible opportunity you have to stand in front of people, explain something that you really love and care passionately about, and teach and have people walk away, learn something from you. That's the reward, and that's something you have to always keep in mind. So in getting ready to give a talk, pre-preparation is really important. And I think these three pre-preparation items are uh, ones that students often forget to do. First of all, it's really critically important to know your audience. Um, you need to make sure you understand who it is going to be in that audience. When I'm often invited to give a talk at some other university or some conference, I will specifically ask my host who is going to be there. Undergraduates, graduate students, postdocs, faculty, the public, what's their basic knowledge going to be, so I can make sure to tune my talk to match their knowledge level appropriately. Second of all, it's really important to know your time limit and to stick to that time. Do not go long. It is a fundamental error in giving lectures. Third, it's really important to know the technology, so make sure you understand how your computer works, how it's set up, how the slides work, all these sorts of things. This is critically important in constructing and pre-preparing to give a talk. But most important is you want your audience to look like this kid, like these kids. You want to tell a story that engages the audience. And this is, again, I will say this one more time, this is probably the most important thing in constructing a good talk. And it is the one thing that students forget about the most because of this this tendency to be so wrapped up in your data, this tendency to dump the data, to, to want to show everything off that you've collected, and to forget what the story is. And if you tell a good story, this is the response that you're going to get from your audience. And this is what the goal of giving a talk, good talk uh, has to be. So how do you map out a story? How do you put together a really good story? And here's some advice uh, that, that I would give on, on how to do this. First of all, make sure your title of your talk is short and sweet. Um, you want it to be engaging. You want to draw people into the room. Second, in your introduction to your talk, it's really important to focus not on trying to be comprehensive or trying to be really thorough in introducing everything that's been done in the field beforehand. Keep it focused on what questions you want to ask and those issues that are most pertinent to your own story. That is, make the audience care about the questions you're asking so that they'll really be interested in listening to the story you have to tell. The other thing to, to remember to do is to always stay positive. It's really a bad idea in a talk to uh, denigrate the work of others as a way of trying to catapult your work to be more important. Um, stay positive. A key error that many students make is they forget to actually put up a slide that puts down the goals of the talk that they're trying to give. So state your goals very clearly and define what success in your research will be so that you can show people how you've made progress toward that success. Uh, it's also sometimes very useful to actually uh, tempt the audience with a promise of something exciting that they're going to see as the talk uh, proceeds. Most critically, Present your data in order to support the points that you want to make in your story, not the other way around. And this is a strong tendency. Many students, for example, when they're trying to get ready to prepare a talk, the first thing that they do is sit down in front of the computer and start putting data into their slides. And that is the worst thing you can do. The most important thing to do is first figure out what your story is. Okay, what your introduction is going to be, what the arc is going to be, where you're going to have discovery, where things are going to change, and then start putting in data that you need to buttress the points of your story and do it in that order. And if you do it in that order, there will be a tendency for the story to be better and for the focus to be more on that than on the data. Um, it's really also important uh, as you near the end of your talk to circle back to the goals that you set up at the beginning. 
so that so so that everyone can see what it is that you've accomplished and how you've addressed the goals that you did at the beginning of the talk. This this sort of brings the talk around and, and brings you naturally to a conclusion. And finally, in terms of conclusion, it's really important to keep your conclusion brief. If you've told a good story, you don't need to rehash it in a set of bullet points at the end. Avoid the laundry list of conclusions. If you've constructed your talk well, um, you won't have to have a long laundry list. You might have a few bullet points, but something very concise that sort of wraps it all up uh, is all that will be necessary. Um, in thinking about giving a talk, I've also turned to people who are really good at telling stories, and I have a few tips from them. One is from uh, someone that I really enjoy on National Public Radio, Scott Simon, and what he says is a story needs to be told in short, breathable sections. And so there's a tendency when people are giving talks to sort of go on and on and on in sort of one long string. And it's really important to have little breathable sections and breaks. Um, the average attention span of a human being is what, on the order of 8 to 12 minutes or something like that? So make sure your talk has those short, breathable sections. Another really good uh, tip comes from Andrew Stanton, who is responsible for the making of some really good movies, Toy Story and WALL-E. These are incredibly good stories. And what he says is that the audience wants to work for their meal, but they don't want to know that they're doing that. And what he means is, is that you don't have to explain every little thing on every slide. You want the audience to actually be reading and thinking and trying to solve the problem and work through the puzzle themselves, but they don't want to know that they're actually being done told to do that. So that, so you need to feed them enough information so they can follow along, provide a little bit of mystery, but you also want to uh, give them a chance to, to think uh, on their own. And this is, of course, tricky to do, but if you do this well, you'll really engage your audience. So those are my introductory comments on uh, how to give a talk. The next uh, 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 video will discuss making the slides.